to a another gathering at the table of Jehovah for a breaking of his bread. And of course, I am your teacher today with King James Bible University, Burkeville, Texas, Deacon Sampson. You could have made your choice to do and be anywhere else, but you chose to gather here with me today and hopefully you will be filled with some insight on the word of the most high for the topic that we have for this evening so I really don't want to hold you all up long and I'm going to try not to this was a very meaty and uh, detailed, feel full of knowledge type uh, topic. And when as I got to reading up on it and going over the different the supporting precepts and passages for this topic, man. Seemed like the most I already had this cover. <laughs> and uh, you know what they say, sure. It's enough to write a book. Well, he did. He wrote a book on it. So get all your supplies together, your Bible, your notepad, and your pen. Get your hearts and minds ready so that we can settle down and prepare to learn what thus to say the most high to us about the uh, teaching for the day. I introduce to you people, you better be on watch. We're told in the book that we need to watch we need to be aware, we need to pay attention, and basically be on guard of our surroundings, of ourselves, so that we won't be deceived, so that we won't slip off into uh, giving ourselves over to anything that would cause us to be defiled, or become weak in our walk, in our faith, in our deliberate stance for uh, devotion and service to our Creator. So you already know that if you're ready to begin, you have everything you need to be comfortable. I'm ready to begin. And so let's dive into the word of the Most High and see what he has to say to us on this topic, people. You ready? Let's open our books. Today we're going to begin in 
we're going to begin in the book of Mark. We're going to begin in the book of Mark. We're going to go to Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. And we're going to go over here and pick it up at 33 through 36. 33 through 36. And it reads, Take ye heed, watch, and pray. For ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house, gave authority to his servants, to every man, to his work, and commanded the porter to what? Watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning. Lest coming suddenly he find you what? Sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. So you see, people, he's letting us know clearly in his word, which is the reason for this lesson that we need to watch. We have to be on guard, pay attention, be perceptive. You understand? We have to watch people so that we won't be uh, victimized or taken advantage of by the enemy or he catch us ill prepared okay let's pull a passage and see a little, a little bit of support and understanding over here in the book of Revelation We're going to go to Revelation 16, and we want to pick it up at verse 15. And it reads, Behold, I come as a thief. I come as what? As comparison to a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he what? Walk naked and they see his shame. Did I just tell you, get, get caught slipping? Huh? We don't want to get caught slipping, people. We do not want to be taken advantage of and be called ill prepared, okay? So let's get some more understanding and break down to this topic throughout the word of the Most High and see how we need to pay attention and be watchful and to be aware that the flesh 
is the God of many, and if the flesh is the God of many, we must be aware to not allow the flesh to have rule over us. You understand? Only the, the word of God must have rule over us. Okay? So let's go over here and look at Luke. The book of Luke. And we want to pick it up at chapter chapter 12 the book of Luke and we want chapter 12 and we're going to pick it up over here at 39 through 40. 39 through 40, and it reads, And this know, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief, the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh not at an hour when you think not. Then we just read and see that he would in uh, Revelation. Huh? Didn't I just show you in Revelation? Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth. And keepeth his garments, huh? Keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Sound like a witness to me, right? The Bible is supporting itself in its own statements, correct? So we see here. Know this. Or at this and this, no, excuse me, that if the good man or the one who's trying to be obedient to the word of instruction given to him of the house had known what hour the thief would have come, he would have watched. He'd been on guard. He'd been up looking, expecting, and waiting for the intruder or the thief to come break into his home and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready. Did I tell you that? Be on guard, be ready, be watchful, be ready. Be ready also for the Son of Man coming at that hour when you think not. And remember when we first started, he said, you don't know when he coming. In the morning, the evening, midnight, when the cock crow, you don't know when he coming. You just better be ready, right? Let's go over to Matthew. Matthew. And I want to catch chapter 25. Matthew 25. And I want to pick it up at verse 13, 25 and 13. And it reads, watch therefore, for ye neither, excuse me, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Supporting witness, right? It's been spoken, it echoed in the book that we don't know when the son of man is coming back, when that spirit of God is coming back. So we just have to have ourselves prepared with what? The knowledge of God and be in obedience of this instruction given to us in his word. That makes sense? So we've already been told and warned that we don't know when he's coming. 
with time of the day. And so you got to be ready, be ready, right? So we have to also pay attention, people. You got to pay attention, have your, eye, uh, your head on the swivel, eyes wide open to do what? Study, study this book to understand the words that are spoken to us parabolically, those hidden messages and jewels that he gives to you. You know, I've heard it said during the slave times that uh, that the slaves would sing and speak in code. They were saying songs, give encouragement of instruction to one another, you know, keep communication with one another in the presence of the enemy by singing in code. And I wonder if their singing in code was instituted or in, encouraged by the parables that are in the word of God. I don't know. I wasn't there and I don't want to put a definite on that, but it's, it's a thought to keep in mind that it could have been, but we're going to look here at Proverbs. 23, and we're going to pick it up at 7 through 8 to start out with. Then we're going to go over here and catch verse 12, okay? And it reads, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat, learn, drink and gain understanding, saith he to thee. But his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. See that? We got to be on guard and pay attention not to consume the wrong thing. Because if we consume the wrong thing, it's not going to be beneficial to us. You understand what I'm sharing with you? We have to receive the, the, the wholesome or nutritious word of God, that word, that word that gives life. You understand? Verse 12, apply thine heart unto instruction and thine ears to the words of knowledge. See that? Didn't I tell you earlier that we have to gain the knowledge of God? See? True knowledge, true wisdom, true insight from his word teaches us how to live and guides us on the holy path to his throne. You understand what I'm sharing with you? Let's look over here at Mark. Let's go back over here to the book of Mark. Mark, and we want to catch chapter 14. Mark, chapter 14. And we're going to pick it up at verse 30 and 31. 30 and 31. And it reads, And Yahweh said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, That this day, This day, Even in this night, Before the cock crow twice, Thou shalt deny me thrice. You see that? But, Because we got to pay attention, Be aware now. He forewarned him. He said this night, you gonna deny me three times for the cock crow twice, but he spake the more vehement, vehemently, you know, with passion and intent. 
you know what I'm saying, with, with, with some uh, uh, emphasis there, you know, if I should die with thee, I would not deny thee in any wise, likewise also saith they all. And how many times have we heard people say that, oh, they, they want to obey the word of God, and they committed to being an obedient servant unto him. But then, then you, when you turn around, especially if you know the truth of the instruction of the Most High to us, a lot of their uh, actions, and even some of their own uh, verbiage, some of their vernacular is testimonial of what? Hypocrisy. And I don't know about you all, but... Until I started learning properly how to conduct myself, I have really, truly, thoroughly examining myself, I have been guilty of hypocrisy because I was walking around because I was shown, taught, saw from the examples given by those who preceded me and were older, and, you know, especially when you're young, you think just because an adult or someone who is aged is giving you instruction or showing you an example that they are conducting themselves in order of righteousness to God just because they say, do, and give an appearance of that which seemingly is pious or holy or godly. You understand what I'm sharing with you? But if we're not walking with that concise precision of obedience of the word that the Most High gives us, then we're being hypocrites. I know it's a hard pill to swallow, but we have to accept the truth. And by accepting the truth, we can cleanse ourselves of unrighteousness so that the Most High Spirit can dwell within our what? Our temples. I want to share something with you. Look over here in Luke 22. Look over here at Luke 22, and let's pick it up here at verse 31. Because see, this, anybody can come along with a pair of lips. You know, I know you heard it said, oh, a pair of lips can say anything. Well, that's true. A pair of lips can say anything. So that's why we have to have our actions of obedience be a witness or a testimony or a token of the fact that we, of, of, of the truth of the God that we serve, because we're doing what, what he says for us to do. And that sets us apart, okay? Makes us a peculiar treasure. But in allegiance with uh, what this brother was saying and doing over here in Mark, let's look here in Luke and see so. And the creator said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. See that? So Satan doesn't want us to be uh, those beacons of light, those testimonies of the Most High saying, look at my servant. Have you said to them, look at it. He doing what I told him to do. Well, see, I, I've taught on and shown, told and shared with you all before that perfection is attainable if we obey it. Right? Right? How many of you all know that we can walk in perfection if we're doing what thus say the most I say? 
I know y'all probably don't believe it. Now, if you want, you can go back and look at that lesson. You know, be perfect. But right now, I'm telling you that if we're seeking out and searching for the knowledge of the Most High, Satan doesn't want us to be a, a witness of obedience in the presence of those who are in darkness to give them reasons to come into the light or either to witness the fact that they are truly walking in darkness without the knowledge of the Most High. You know what I'm saying? Look there at verse 40. Verse 40 of Luke 22. And it reads, And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that you enter not into temptation. Why? Because Satan is desiring to sift you like wheat, trying to trip you up, trying to make you stumble and fall on the way. So don't fall into temptation. Why? Because when the man falls into temptation, what happens? Huh? Anybody? Can anybody tell me? Does anybody know? Don't worry about it. I'm going to share it with you anyway. So I know you, uh, I know you probably don't believe me. So, uh, he said, pray that you enter not into temptation. Why is that being said? Well, let's look and see why that's being said. Okay? Turn real quick. So real quick. Matter of fact, we gonna catch fourteen and thirteen. For thirteen and fourteen. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. God doing this to me. He trying to try me, testing me, trying to see if I'm no. But God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he what? Is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. You're drawn away of what? Your own lust and are enticed. Okay? So, what do we need to do? Back over here, back over here to Luke 22. Get right back down here to 40. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Watch, be on guard. Because he told him earlier, watch and pray, right? And he's going to repeat that a few more times in our reading of this teaching. Okay? Now let's turn, if you don't mind, to uh, Proverbs. Turn over to the book of Proverbs. I tell you, people, that it has really been a a thick, trying week. Matter of fact, the last few weeks has really been 
kind of pressing and trying on me. And I've had the uh, weight and pressure of a lot of different situations come and attack my fortitude, my capability to be able to respond to and to uh, deal with. But I've made it through and I am making it through. But have these situations been easy? No. Especially with time, things that, you know, if you're in the mind state of thinking that the, I know some of y'all have heard of Isley Brothers, Smooth Sailing, and I know some of y'all may know that song. So if you in that mind state, you know, symbolically speaking or, you know, illustratively speaking, uh, that life is just supposed to be smooth sailing, then you're disillusioned. You know, because if life is smooth sailing all the time, you don't have skip, you don't have nothing going on. You're not being conditioned to see if uh uh things are No, that ain't what I want. If you're not being con conditioned and prepared, then guess what? So, let's catch this again. Hearken, listen unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Now, if you want to look at this spiritually, we know who our father is, and we all should know who our mother is, okay? And we should not forsake either one of them. You understand what I'm sharing with you? We should not turn our backs on the guide and instruction from either one of our parents. Our spiritual plan, okay? Look with me here at Genesis. Look here at Genesis. Because, see, we were told to listen unto our father back here. And I want to see if I remind you of it, will you remember that we were told some instructions about listening to who our father is, okay? Genesis 49, and we're gonna pick it up at one and two. One and two. And it reads, and Jacob called unto his sons and said, gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and uh, hearken, see that word, hearken, listen unto Israel, your father. So we know who our father is. And over here in Proverbs is telling us to hearken unto your father that begat thee and despise not your mother, which is wisdom, when she is old, okay? Deuteronomy. Returning to the book of Deuteronomy. And we want to pick it up over here 
at verse 11. Excuse me, chapter 11. I apologize. Deuteronomy chapter 11. And we'll pick it up at verse 16 through 18. Deuteronomy 11, <clears throat> 16 through 18. As I told you, watch out for the deceit, right? And it reads, Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve of the gods. This is one of the things that we're being watchful for, people, okay? And worship them. And then the, the spirit of God's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven that there be no rain. What are you going to do if his uh, 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 wrath is kindled against you? He'll shut up the heaven that there be no rain and that the land yield not her fruit unless ye, unless ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Spirit of God giveth you. Therefore, Shall ye lay up these my words? You see that? Hearken unto your father. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand, your power, that ye, that, excuse me, that they may be as frontlets between your understanding. See that, people? This is part of the hearkening unto our father that we should adhere to. Job. The book of Job. Let me see if I got it marked. No, I don't. The book of Job. And I want to reach down and catch it. At 15. Ooh, I went too far. Job 15 and 31. Job 15 and 31, and it reads, Let not him that is deceived trust in vanity. See that? Because remember, we touched at uh, James 1, and he said, oh, uh, if, if a man is drawn away, he drawn away of his own lust and entice. Uh, so that's what, one of the things that we have to be watching for and be alert for so that we won't be deceived. So let no, let not him that is deceived trust in vanity. For vanity shall what? Be his recompense, his payment. If you trust in that vanity, you're going to get vain in return, vanity in return. Okay? So watch that you don't be received. Pay attention that you don't be deceived. Okay. Now, let's turn over here and get some more insight on our watching. On how watching. Okay. Over here in the book of Mark. Turn over here in the book of Mark. And we want to run down here to the. Chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. And we'll pick it up at verse 30. Verse 37. Make sure I'm in the right space on this one. No. Yeah, I was supposed to do 33. No, 
verse 37. I apologize. It's 37. It was already highlighted, but that's just being read. Okay, I got you. Mark 13 and 37. And it says, and what I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. You see, this is he's emphasizing. Watch. We're supposed to be alert. We're supposed to be paying attention. Because at 35, he told us, watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house coming at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning. So what I say unto you, I say unto all. This is an instruction to us all. Even now, we're supposed to watch. Y'all see that? Watch. Okay, we're supposed to watch, be attentive, awake, you know what I'm saying? Be on guard. We're supposed to watch First Thessalonians. All this is in your book too, people. And these are things that, you know, we should be paying attention to, to help gear ourselves and knowledge so that we'll, we can be fortified against the attacks of the enemy. You understand what I'm sharing with you? And we want five, chapter five, chapter five, chapter five, and we want verses four through eight. Four through eight people. Okay. Four through eight. And it reads. But ye brethren. Are not in darkness. That that day should overtake you as a thief. Remember he said that he would come as a thief in the night. We don't know what time. But if we're watching. We're being alert. We're awake. We're paying attention. For being on guard. He's telling us here. But you brother. Are not in darkness. Because we're being told. And shown and instructed. To pay attention and watch right. So you've been given the light of warning. And instruction to pay attention. To be aware. Right. And you're not in darkness. Being taken advantage of being deceived. That, that day. Of his return should overtake you as a thief. Remember he said he would come as a thief in the night for those who ain't paying attention. He said, you are all the children of light. Or we should be as we're walking in this truth and have the, uh, uh, been awakened to the instructions of our God and the children of the day. We are not of the night without knowledge, nor of darkness. Okay, therefore, let us not sleep. Let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, let us, not like them, let us, but different. That plumb line has been set, and there should be a distinction between us and them, okay? Who are of the day? Be sober, put it on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Proverbs 23. Hmm. Proverbs and I want to pick it up. Oh, I went too far. Proverbs twenty-three 
and I won't verse 23. 23. And it reads, buy the truth, buy the truth, purchase it, accept and believe, buy the truth and sell it not, don't release it, okay? Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding, okay? Believe in wisdom, purchase or accept wisdom and instruction and understand it and don't release it from your possession okay hold on to it tightly because see that's going to be part of the found your foundational bill that's going to help gear you through your trials tribulations through your your challenges through those uh uh, uh temptational times through those challenging times when the enemy comes to try to trip you up, you know what I'm saying, and make mockery of you and make a fool of you. You understand what I'm sharing with you? So we got to buy truth. We have to accept it, believe it, and don't release it, okay? And we're saying all this, why? Because the flesh is God unto many people. And the ones that the flesh is their God, they are going to give you their understanding of life from their perspective of wisdom, knowledge that they have acquired. And let them tell it. Everything that they saying is true. Okay. And they don't want to hear. They, 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 man, I'm telling you, I've been hearing people lately that has really set a bad taste in my ears and in my stomach of some of the things that they have allowed to come out of their mouths. And you can truly tell how uh, defiled a lot of people, a lot of people's thinkings are. Okay. And we don't want to be caught up in the same washing machine of back and forth oscillating in life type situations that these people are going through. We want to press forward. You understand? We want to strive with purpose, dedication, and deliverance toward the most high. All right, and not just be here in this realm existing only to be annihilated or sent to the lake of fire for an eternal separation, damnation. All right, so Jeremiah 3 reads, 3 and 3 reads, therefore. The showers have been withholding because a lot of folks ain't, they, they, they not holding on to the truth. They're not possessing that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. They're letting it go. So therefore the showers have been withholding and there have been no latter rain and thou has a whore's forehead. You see that? And thou, you, has a whore's forehead. Thou refuse to be ashamed. For will thou not from this time cry unto me, my father, thou art the God of my youth? See, so a lot of folks, when they go through their issue, they gonna cry out to him. But then it'll be too late. Because you didn't submit to him when he told you to and the way he told you to. You want to give God your own to listen and expect him to accept that as payment, to uh, 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 support or to 
uh, assist you with succor, to assist, to help you with his power, with his knowledge, his, his empathy for you, because that's what you want, drawn away of your own lust and entice. You know what I'm saying? But that ain't what we supposed to do. Five. Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou could. See, whatever you thought you could get away with, whatever you thought you could implement, that what you that's how you came. See, and that's how uh, uh Cain came to him. You understand? He brought him what he wanted to give him. Fruit and earth. But no, that's erroneous. Okay? Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel. It's right there. Ezekiel 11. And we want chapter 11. And I want to pick it up at verse 5 through 12. Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 5 through 12. And it reads, And the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said unto me, Speak, speak, thus said the Lord. Not me, not speak thus what said Deacon Samson, not speak what thus said your parent or your homeboy, homegirl, or your whoever you may have reverence for, but speak what thus said the Spirit of God. Thus have ye said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them, okay? He knows. You have multiplied your slain in this city, and ye have filled the streets thereof with the slain. Those people who don't don't know the word of God, who live in according to the ways of the flesh. Therefore, thus said the Creator God, your slain, whom you have laid in the midst of it, they are the flesh. Did I just say that? They are the flesh, and this city is the cauldron. But I will bring you forth out of the midst of it. You have feared the sword, and I will bring a sword upon you, said the Creator God. And I will bring you out of the midst thereof, and deliver you into the hands of strangers, and will execute judgments among you. I will execute, and he will execute doctrines and teachings among you. You shall fall by the sword. I will judge, teach you in the border of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Spirit of God. This city shall not be, this city shall not be your cauldron. Neither shall ye be the flesh in the midst thereof. But I will judge you in the border of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Spirit of God. For ye have not walked in my statutes, neither executed my judgment, but have done after the manner of the heathen, them slain, the manner of the heathen that are round about you. You see that, people. You see that. You done after the man of the heathen that are round about you. But what instruction did he give to us in the law? Huh? Get your mind go there real quick while I put it up. Cause some of you who know, y'all might know where I'm fitting to go if you know your book. Deuteronomy 12. But for those who don't know, you... Oh, you about to find out today. You gonna know today what does say in this book. Huh? And we want to catch it at 12, 30, and 31. Thirty. 
31. You might well go on here too. You go ahead too as a bonus. Just to uh drive it home. Okay. But it reads, Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared. You see that? If you watch it, you are being aware, you are uh, uh, awake on God. You know what I'm saying? You're paying attention. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire, and he's talking about these heathen, that they uh that thou inquire not after their gods. You see that? Saying, How did these nations serve their God? Don't ask all that. He gave you instruction how to come to him. But see, you're paying attention looking at the heathen, what? The manners of the heathen that around about you and you were oh i that, that i like how they dress i like how they cook their food and season it i like the way that they gyrate and dance and and, and, and celebrate on their holidays with their gods i want to come to my god that same way but what did he say in his word huh thou shalt not do so Unto the spirit of God thy God. For every abomination to the spirit of God which he hated. Have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters. Have they burnt in the fire to their gods. So you can't see the manners of the heathen that are around about you. This is what they doing. So we can't do him like that. So what things soever I command you, observe to do it, that thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Don't change it. You follow the specifications, the exacting order and manner in which the Most High give you his word. Don't go to him in the manners of the heathen because you like the 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 ambiance or the flavor in which they serve their gods, doing it their way makes you abominable. And we just saw that, huh? It's not me telling you this. This is in the book. Thou shalt not do so. Thirty one. Thou shalt not do so until the spirit of God thy God. Why? Every abomination to the spirit of God, which he hated, how they done unto their God. Why? Because that's what, they, that's what they like. That's what those gods like. Their gods are idols. You understand? All the gods of the nations are idols. So you can't serve your God in that manner. You understand, people, what I'm sharing with you? Huh? Let's go ahead and check it out. James. The book of James. And we're on chapter one. And we're going to pick it up at 12 through 15. Okay? We're going to pick it up at 12 through 15. And it reads, Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Creator had, which the Creator had promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted. Excuse me. I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and entice. Then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. So you see the process order of giving in to your own lust and going against what he said. 
But if we watching it and, and paying attention and obeying him, we won't get caught up in what we want because we won't what? Put our own twist of our desires of the flesh on. We'll obey and commit and submit to the instruction of the word of God. Right? Right. Romans. The book of Romans. And we want to pick it up. Romans. We're on chapter eight. Chapter eight, Romans. And I want twelve through thirteen. Twelve through thirteen. And it reads, Therefore, brethren. We are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. See that? But if ye, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. See what, that, what I was just saying a while ago? You want to do after the manner of the heathen around about us, because that's what's enticing to us. But if we love the Father, promise the Father, and want to obey Him, and want to be pleasing in His sight, we're going to modify the deeds of the body. We're going to we're going to put to death, to put to rest what we want. We won't don't want the 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 comforts and the conveniences of this flesh to rule us. We want the knowledge of God to instruct and rule over us. We don't want a man to rule have rule and authority over us. We want the one true living God, the King of Kings, His word to rule over us. You understand what I'm sharing with you people? Okay, so we got to modify the deeds of the body. So that we may live because that word that we receive is spirit and it is life. And his word is the only thing that gives us true life. But if you're not paying attention and doing what the following instructions that he gives, you're not receiving that word of life. And thus you shall die. You just see it here. So I'm not making this up to you. We seeing it. Five through eight. And it reads. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. This is why you got to put uh, 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 modify the deeds of the body. Because they that are after the flesh mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So which one are you going to choose? You claim you're in the light. We just read that we're supposed to all be children of light. If we're obeying this instruction in this word, and we're supposed to be children of light, we're supposed to be doing what? The things that are after the spirit. For to be calmly minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the corner mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So when they that are in the flesh, so then they that are in the flesh, so let me, let me, hear me what I'm trying to share with you, okay? They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, okay? We are debtors. We owe, but we don't owe the flesh. Because to live after the flesh is what? Death. Right? For to be carnally minded is death. We just read that. Right? The carnal mind, that fleshly mind, is enmity against God. Right? For it cannot be subject to the law of God. So we can't worship God the way that people around us are worshiping their idols. 
You have to come correct and come uh, uh, follow the instruction. Okay? So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You have to mortify the deeds of the body in order to live and obey the word of the spirit. You have to mortify the deeds of the body to live. You understand this, people? It's right here in your book. The formula for living is here. This is why we can't trust what? Let God be truth and every man be a liar. You know what I'm saying? You're not li you listening to what I'm saying because I'm reading it to you, but you're not listening to me as far as my own thought or idea or ideology, my own uh, 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 psychological evaluation of your existence to tell you what to do and how to do. We're all bringing in the subjection and the obedience, our thoughts, imaginations, and our wills up under the obedience of the word of Christ. Does that make sense? You understand what I'm sharing with you? If you understand what, you, what, what I'm sharing with you, let me know it. Put a yeah there. Put a eye there. Let me see. Because if you're not understanding, then we need to, I need to break it down for you so you can get a better understanding of what's being said. So you'll know that the task and the, the, the mission that we're on is a very crucial and serious one. And we don't only have this one life, this one breath. You understand? We only have this one opportunity to get it right. Now, how long of an opportunity, that's between you and the most high. We all differentiate in that manner, okay? But we all have the same task that call ourselves obeying God. We got to mortify this flesh, this flesh people, okay? The flesh cannot, excuse me, the flesh cannot enter into heaven. Flesh and blood does not enter into heaven. And he's of pure eyes and can't behold evil. And the flesh is evil, so he ain't paying no attention to that. Right? This is very serious, people. And I pray that you have a mind to commit yourself to take it serious. Okay? Now, we're getting down here to the end of this teaching. Philippians. Go to the book of Philippians. That government, I was supposed to go mark it. Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. And we want 7 through 14. Philippians 3, 7 through 14. It reads, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of what? The knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, the word of God, the spirit of God, the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, mortifying them deeds of the body, I've suffered all the loss of all things and do count them but dumb that I may win Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness. You see that? Not having my own righteousness. I done killed myself off to obey him, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable, conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, I ain't there yet, I'm striving for it, pressing to for working on it, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. 
brethren, you who are like-minded, you who are my equal in this obedience to this word, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. See that? 18 through 21. And it reads, For many walk, of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things, who do what? Who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Okay? Remember, bringing every thought and imagination and casting down strongholds and bringing every thought and imagination unto, up under the obedience of Christ. You go read that in Corinthians. Matthew. Our last passage for this night is in Matthew. Matthew chapter 26. I still ain't get far. Matthew chapter 26. And I want verse 31. Matthew 26 and 31. Then I want to catch 38 through 41. Oh, I had the wrong one. 26, 31. Excuse me, 26, 31. 26, 31. Matthew 26, 31. Twenty-six, thirty-one, reads. Then said Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is all ye, all you, all of us shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. You see that? But after I am risen again. I will go before you into Galilee, 38 through 41. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. What? Tarry ye here while we here in the valley of the shadows of death, while we here in this flesh and watch with him. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. 
And he cometh unto the disciples and find them asleep. Is he going to come to you and find you sleeping? I pray he don't. And saith unto Peter, What could ye, what? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch. Pray that ye enter not into temptation. That the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's why we got to mortify the deeds of the flesh, people. Why we got to put to death the, 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 the actions and the deeds of the flesh. That when he comes, We'll be paying attention. We'll be looking for him and he won't catch us off guard like a thief in the night. You understand? So I'm asking you to wake up crying out to you. His message telling you to please be on guard. Watch. Pray. Modify the deeds of the flesh. Take heed to your the words of your father, what he said unto you, okay? And remember, 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, not unto me, not unto some entity of, of or deity of a building, not unto the idols of the nations, but approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And until we come together again at the table of Jehovah for another breaking of his bread, I bid you all, every last one of you, the best, of Shalom. Shalom, people.